Hello everyone and welcome to the sixth video in our series, we've made it all the way to the last shape of the caged. Now we are on the D shape, all right? So this is actually the last piece of the puzzle that we need to complete and understand the whole fretboard. And in the, in the next video to follow, I'll show you how to really put it together and really manipulate each part and, or just, you know, whiz in and out of all of them, right? Have a good time with it. But either way, right now, let's go ahead and finish the final piece to this puzzle. This is great. So the last one is the D shape, right? Caged. The D is on the end. So let's go ahead now, and I'd like you to play a normal open D major chord. Now, just like before, it's movable. So let's, let's just look at how we can move this shape. So I'd like you to use different fingers, of course. We're going to use the second, third, and fourth finger instead right now to play the same exact chord we just did. So second finger, second fret of the third string. Then pinky on the third fret of the second string. Second finger on the, no, then the third finger, oh, sorry, on the second fret of the first string. And open D. And there we got it. So, if we were to move this around, what do we need to do? to make sure the open string isn't open anymore. Well, we're gonna have to stretch our first finger way back, put it behind the nut, and it's gonna be a stretch two frets in between these two fingers. So this is where it would be if there was more fretboard. Let's go ahead and move the shape up one half step, right? So everything up one half step. First finger will be on the first fret of the D string. And voila, we have it. So this is now an E flat major chord, or a D sharp. I would call it E flat though. Um, but it's the same, right? So we just move everything up one half step. How do we know it's E flat? Well, this note is E flat, right? It went from D to E flat. So there you have it. If we move it all up one more, which is pretty cool right here actually, we now have an E major chord. You can play the open E with it too. Check that out. Right? So anyway, that's really cool. Let's go back now. Or this is how you move it around, okay? This is how you move it. You can continue moving it. I'd like to do one thing though to help you understand how we're going to use this shape in a practical way. It's kind of tough to hold that chord shape the way we just did. Um, now, let's go ahead and play our original D again. So one thing that happens all the time is, now you got to understand that these two strings are the same, right? E and E are the same. That means that any fret that you play on these two strings is the same note. It's just two octaves apart. So something that, something that we do often with a D chord is instead of playing this F sharp note here on the first string, we put it here on the uh, uh, sixth string. Happens all the time, right? Happens all the time. You could even use all four fingers and play it. So, but yeah, one option is instead of putting it here, put it here. And play a D sharp, or, or excuse me, we play a D major chord with an F sharp note in the bass. And play these four strings. And that's kind of the shape that we're actually going to be using when we do this. So I want you to try that out. And now let's go ahead and move it and I'll show you how we can really use that same shape and apply it. So this one's going to come way high up. It's gonna come all the way to, you're gonna put your, well you can put your first finger on the 12th fret of the D string. This note is D, it's a D chord, right? Now we're gonna put our second finger on the 14th fret of the E string. If you have a classical guitar without a cutaway or acoustic without a cutaway, this might be tough. Um, and then we put our third finger also on the 14th fret of the G string. Pinky on the 15th fret of the 2nd string, which is the B string, and we just play those four. We're going to mute the other two. We don't want to hear the A of the E string. I have my finger just kind of touching it. See that? Now this is the shape we're going to use. We could use the original D shape like I showed you to have move it. However, this is much easier, and it's very practical. This is a great chord voice indeed playing rhythm. So anyway, this is the chord shape. Now the tonics are here. The, the fourth string and the second string. Go ahead and play those. This is a very practical tonic shape as well. So 
to play melodies with and solos with. So here's our chord, and here's our tonic. So you got those two parts now. Now let's go ahead and move on to the uh, arpeggio. And actually, this one, <laughs> so there's actually three shapes that have two options for arpeggios. And they're all very similar, the way they play out on the fretboard. This one also has two options. So let's go ahead and look at the options. So for the arpeggio, I will tell you, this is maybe the weirdest one. However, I want you to do the fingering just like I tell you. It's strange, but just trust me, alright? So, second finger, 12th fret, D string. This is our root. This is, this is kind of the lowest root in the position. This is a tricky one, but that's it. We're going to use it. Now, this is what we're going to do is we're going to put our first finger on the 11th fret of the G string. We're going to stretch with our third finger to the 14th fret. Now we're going to put our pinky on the uh, 15th fret of the 2nd string. And then our third finger is going to go on the 14th fret of the E string. And that's backwards, so... And then we go backwards. Now, to go lower, we're going to go to uh, the 12th fret as well on the A string. Same finger. Now we're going to put our pinky on the 14th fret of the E string. And then we're going to stretch all the way back with our first finger to the 10th fret. It's kind of like the E shape before it. It kind of mixes in and blends. But we're going to end here. That's the whole arpeggio. So going backwards again is like... But that's where we go back for this shape, is in the center. Alright, now, that's only one option for the arpeggio. Again, I want you to choose which one you prefer. So here is the second option. So first finger on the 12th fret of the D string. We're going to stretch their pinky all the way to the 16th fret. And then it's just as it was before. Stretch with the pinky here. First finger here. Now, first finger on A. Uh, the 12th fret of the A string then the third finger on the 14th fret of the E string, and that's as far as we're going for this, this option. And that's it, so... Alright, so right there, that's the second option. Choose which one you like, but it's, of course it's going to be good to know both, um, but, but at least memorize one, alright? Now, here's the scale. So the scale pattern goes a little like this. So just before we do it though, it does have a few shifts in it. So pay attention because we have to shift our fingers around. So we're gonna start with the second finger, uh, 12th fret of the D string. Now we play two and four. So to the 14th, 14th fret. Now the next are gonna be, next string we're gonna play the first and fourth finger on the 11th and 14th fret. Now we're gonna shift and play one and four again, but we're going to move our hand up a half step and start our first finger on the 12th fret and then the uh, 15th fret with the pinky. Now, first and third finger on the next string and then backwards. So, three, one, pinky, first finger, shift, pinky, first finger again. Now, pinky and second finger for all these strings. Back up to where we end on D. So that's the whole scale right there. So let me play it. Shift. Shift. These are all going to be the same. Ending on D. <laughs> and that's the whole thing. Now chord, tonic shape. all the stuff, let me run through the procedure. So chord, two, three, four, arpeggio. Alright, 
So that's it. That's all five. That's all five patterns with with each of the four elements within each of them. Some of them have an alternative arpeggio. I know it's a lot at first, um, but really in a few months, which really isn't that much time, it, you're going to be set and memorize all of this and be able to play it really well. So it is going to take, you know, probably at least a month to really memorize all this stuff. Um, but if you work at it a little bit every day, you'll have it in no time, really. So that's it. Let's go ahead and now demo this stuff with our jam track again. Here we go. Ready? I'll play it only in this position. Arpeggio first. stuff you got a chance to jam with it you got everything you need so again if you have any questions please don't hesitate to ask us we will help you out and that's really it so now you've got all five components so please just practice memorize this stuff you know use the chord diagrams use your ear to make sure it sounds just the way it does when I play it um, and just make sure you get all the right notes all the right stuff the fingerings and that's it take it slow and practice every day and in no time, you're going to be like, you know, whoever your favorite superstars are in the guitar world. So anyway, that's it. Congratulations getting through all these patterns. Thanks so much for sticking it out. And in the next video, I'm going to really uh, open your eyes to how you can put this stuff together, use the whole fretboard, change keys, you know, play in different keys, and show you what else the cage system has to offer. Because really, this is just the beginning. All right, so get to practicing, and we'll see you in that next lesson. Whenever you have this all memorized, go ahead to the next one. See you later. Thanks so much for sticking it out. Have a great day.